Spunk Monkey Theft Retrieval System. Because sometimes getting your car back is simply not enough. Another revolutionary idea you'll only find at Suburban Auto Group, pending approval by Department of Agriculture. Hey everyone, it's Mark Sargent, and normally this would be part of a Strange World episode on True Frequency Radio, which I do Tuesday nights for a couple hours, but honestly, between the phone calls that come in and the sheer amount of emails that I get on a regular basis, I just can't get through them all during Strange Worlds. So what I've decided to do, just to be fair to people, because there are a lot of emails that I really, really like, and I'm, I'm realizing that I'm screening more and more and just you know cherry-picking what I consider to be the best ones, that I'm going to do some one-hour segments, uh, starting with this one, called, probably called Flat Earth Q&A, and we're, I'm just going to read through, not all of them, of course, you know, there's some emails that are just kind of out there, which is fine, but I will read some that are kind of out there. So I'll read and kind of do a q and I'll, I'll read the questions or, or responses or feedback or comments and respond as best I can, and then I'll just do those separately from Strange World, and hopefully I can, I can start catching up because I've got a full load already for this Tuesday and next Tuesday, uh, and there's a statement I've got to read, and, and plus who knows how many people are going to call in. So let's just get right to it, shall we? Oh yeah, by the way, and if you're seeing this on video, if you're actually seeing my smiling face uh, on video, that means that uh, you're watching this on MarkSargent.com. MarkSargent.com is the only place you can actually see me reading it. And I don't, don't, don't know why people actually want to see me reading it, but that's fine. If you're just on YouTube, then you're hearing my voice and you're hearing, you know, seeing some slides in the background. Anyway, just thought I'd differentiate the two. So let's start off with a letter from William. Uh, he says, the subject is original fabrication of spherical model. Thank you for your highly intuitive vids regarding our planet's truth. What groups, in your opinion, are responsible for establishing the incipient reasoning behind the globe model deception? Thank you, Dr. William K. Gibson. Uh, well, William, when it comes to the people on the ground that are responsible for at least keeping the illusion alive, uh, you've got to look at the United States government and the Soviet Union. They were the ones that first found this thing back in the 1950s, and then you know the United States really did a number because they were the ones that created NASA, and they also helped orchestrate the 1959 Antarctic Treaty. So there's a bunch of nations, but not that many people at the very top. Remember, less is more when it comes to this. Uh, compartmentalization and keeping as few people in the loop as possible is the only way you can get this going. But to answer your question, uh, the United States and the Soviet Union, they, they have to be the most responsible because they were there on the ice back in 1956. Uh, Jennifer writes, Hey Mark, haven't contacted you in a, in a while. Hope you're having another great week on our flat earth. I got to thinking it's too bad flat earth became the key phrase for what we are currently learning about where it really is that we all live. People seem to just immediately shy away and altogether in one second shut down the possibility due to the earth being quite uneven in its heights and drops, otherwise known as peaks and valleys. Well, of course it's not flat. You can't think that us flat earthers believe or uh, think or see it flat as a plate, board, or pancake. All you have to do is go outside and look around, look at the sun, look at the moon, study them, study the relative size of each, better yet, go take pictures of them daily. Watch the sun traveling across the sky, and at sunset, watch it as it simply moves out of your sight. You will notice it has just moved far enough away from your vantage point. I took a pic pic of my kids last week outside. It was an incredibly hot day. What was so clear to my eyes were the sun's rays touching the ground. The sun is closer to the earth, thus creating 100 degree summer temps. It is fascinating to realize we have been lied to just just, I'm sorry, just flat out lied to. We actually believe we are spiraling through outer space and keeping a 24 hour clock and a four season year. Yeah. Keep up the awesome work. I owe you cookies. I apologize. I have three boys and they all know now the earth is stationary. Oh, nice. Signed, Geneva. So thank you very much, Geneva. Uh, this one is from Gigi. 
Question. Hey Mark, great videos, truly inspiring. What about crop circles? Is it is there no outer space? How do those get made? They'd reinforce an outer space reality. Thanks, GG. I disagree. Uh, GG on if these things if a crop circle actually reinforces outer space uh, We we think of them as reinforcing outer space because we're told that UFOs make them of course We're not told officially that they make them uh, look into crop circles and the two gentlemen that uh, The two British gentlemen that supposedly debunked crop circles and said oh, yeah They made them two drunk guys from a bar came out and with some planks and boards and said they were the ones that that made crop circles absolutely a bunch of crap uh, they did not do that. And in fact, I remember it was in the 90s, the early 90s, when that story came out. Because just before that, there was another story, you guys can look this up if you want, where uh, one of the British newspapers, the ones that covered this, and, and said, oh yeah, it's totally debunked, crop circles are completely not real. Uh, they, they offered 50,000 pounds, which was back in the early 90s, well, for adjusting for inflation, so it was a lot of money. But 50,000 pounds, even then, was about 75,000 American dollars. That's a little chunk of change there for anyone that could prove they could make a crop circle. Literally, it's like, are you kidding me? I, I was half tempted to fly over there and make a crop circle myself. And these two guys came out and over, and sure enough, they got paid 50,000 pounds. They split it, 25,000 pounds each. This is enough to stay at the bar for a while. And uh, that was it. But that doesn't explain so many of the crop circles. You want to look into some interesting stuff. Uh, look into the Milk Hill crop circle, which covered about almost half a million square feet. It was a crazy, a crazy intricate, crazy huge, covered kind of a sloping ground. It wasn't even across a perfectly flat field. And uh, it, I couldn't have, you could give me, back then you could have given me Photoshop. Remember, this is the 90s, right? Photoshop in a week and it would have been tough for me to create that and yet these guys supposedly did it in a night No, and plus the you you want some more interesting stuff and I think I include these slides, uh, but you can look it up on any images you can find it look up the uh, the Russian crop circles it's like unless you get unless you're telling me that these guys actually flew to England and uh you know, did some crop circles, or I'm sorry, flew to Russia and, and flew over there. That's, look, it's, it doesn't make sense. Look up the Krasnodor, K-R-A-Z, Krasnodor, I believe that's it, or, or S, K-R-A-S, either one. Um, you'll find the crop circles, or, or, or crop writing. It looks like pages of, of text in a language that no one's ever, ever seen before. Uh, and, you know, no one's decrypted it, and it's very, very, very interesting. So, anyway, sorry, I'm off, off on a tangent here. Um, Bobby writes, uh, the title of his email is called Claustrophobic. Is it me or do other people get this feeling of claustrophobia? I am not claustrophobic, but I get this uneasy feeling when thinking we live in a closed system. I'm researching Rob Skiba's Enoch's Enclosed World on YouTube and it makes me feel uneasy that there is no escape route, lol. I don't understand, though, why in the 1950s would Russia and the United States take a chance exploding atomic bombs in the atmosphere, not knowing if there would be a chance that air or oxygen would escape the dome and create a disaster where millions of humans would die. Yeah, Bobby, to answer your question there, um, think of the atomic weapons test, uh, the Trinity test, where there were some physicists that said that there was a chance that the, the first bomb test would actually ignite the atmosphere, setting off a chain chain reaction and killing us all. And the the logic behind is like why they did it is like, well, if we're wrong, then we're no one's going to get in trouble for it because we'll all be dead. So that you know, it's like, oh, okay. So if punishment is taken out of the equation, will scientists take the leap forward? Yes, they will, and that's exactly what they did here. Yeah, let's throw atomic weapons at at a wall. We know nothing about what's on the other side. Uh, only maybe from rumor and myth and legend. And, and let's see what happens. Uh, bad idea. Horrible idea. Although it, you know, didn't... Nothing came in, you know, thank God. If it was the waters, you know, severing the waters below... I'm sorry, the waters above and the waters below and it was a firmament, then... Uh, yeah, there was a chance you could create the whole Noah's Ark flood again. Uh, but that didn't happen, so thank God. Uh, so if you're wondering why, it's because science, again, they... Science will take risks if they know there's no repercussions and or even if there are repercussions if it's limited i and i don't want to get into the the, you know, the look at how many times science has been wrong in the commercial sector 
Uh, let's see. Subject matter of this is called flight. Hey, Mark. My name is Vitali. I live in Canada for about four years. First of all, I want to apologize for my English, but still, I live in Alberta. Originally, I am from Ukraine. Oh, thank God, because let's say Canadians don't have their own language. Uh, four years ago, it was my first international flight in my life. Just to be clear, I tell points I have been flight fighting through. Oh, flighting, flying through. Kiev, Moscow, Moscow to Tor Toronto. Everything seems simple on logic, uh, but I've been watching flight tracking during my flights. And my first question was, what the heck are we flying above Greenland? It's a few thousand kilometers up north. What makes to what makes total mileage more than the straight flight from one coast to another, right? And when I, by accident, got on your videos, and videos people who ask questions hold their... <laughs> Their whole life i was like this is exactly what i was looking my for my whole life and everything took its place Ooh, yeah, english is not not native here uh i'm reading it as is so bear with me grateful for that thank you and f a few more things than messed with my mind many years before i got to see and i saw your video just examples the shape of the rainbow, the sound of thunder. It sounds like it's inside a theater, so loud and like the inside of a huge building. One more example of how the system does work. I own my new my new car three years. Since the first day, I set the time by local radio station and never corrected. But every time I restart my cell phone, the system updates the time by itself automatically. After three years, the gap between uh, the car time and my cell phone time is six minutes. Might be I am wrong about that. Just looks suspicious to me. Looking forward to any comments. Thank you so much, Vitaly. Wow, that's awesome, Vitaly. And I don't know if you actually had a question in there, I think. Yeah, but you're right about the flights. Uh, he, he was just noticing about how the, the flight mileage was all wrong. Uh, greetings from Australia. Mark was listening and in Australia and was just thinking the water on a globe would act different to water on the flat that is within a confined area. It would rebound off the edges and create areas of turbulent waters where water rebounds from two different zones and collide. So my point being water would behave very differently, don't you think? Even to the extent it may provide hard evidence as it can be tested and scale modeled. Regards, Kevin. Uh, P.S. Keep up the good work. We can't hold on much longer down here. <laughs> He means because he's on the bottom side of a ball and they're, they're hanging with their fingertips. It's funny. The, uh, no, no, water, yeah, water on a globe would act different than water on a flat, except that the weather systems in Rovskiva was the first one. You can, you can set, there's some wonderful weather system trackers where you can change the world perspective. And it actually changes the azimuthal equidistant map. And it circles very nicely to where the, you know, the you know, the water and the weather systems go around the, you know, the outside, like the whole thing turns kind of like a giant merry-go-round. And it's very, very cool. As far as the water rebounding off the edges differently, eh, depending on, yeah, of, of what you're doing with it. But I don't think that the water, that much volume is moving that, that fast to, to cause that. So I wouldn't worry about that. I mean, it's no quick K question, but it's not, it's not anything you have to concern yourself with. Uh, let's see, this one is called Inquiry. Sir, sir, I am very happy and honored to have seen your documentary, Under the Dome. It is interesting and almost absurd, being that you clearly go against everything that has been taught. However, I am interested to know where you place the creation of the world by God in this documentary. Being that the Bible says things revealed to us, man, are for us to benefit from and those not revealed are for God. Hmm. I mostly do not consider much about astrology and many other scientific related subjects, not because I am ignorant, but because I believe certain things and questions have no proof or answers. However, for some reason, I would like to find out more on this. Carrying out my own research at this moment is quite difficult as I lack the essential means and resources. I am therefore asking if you can assist by telling the books I can study to enhance my knowledge. I, however, ask if it can be biblically connected, being that I am a Christian. Thank you, and God bless you. Uh, and his name is Nasambo K. Mubila. He's a market research analyst. Probably not from here. Uh, doesn't say where he's from. 
Uh, yeah, it, you, it, from a Christian standpoint, uh, the, the best place I try to send people is Rob Skiba's website, which is testingtheglobe.com. If you are a devout Christian and you want to look more into Flat Earth, uh, yeah, yeah I, can, I can quote you a few chapter and verse, but uh, not as much as Rob and other people. Uh, so by all means, go to his website first and then from there, uh, branch off and, and look at everything else. So please do that when you get a chance. Uh, let's see, this one's titled, Keep Up the Good Work, Inspiring. Mark, I'm a huge fan. I clicked on an interview to, you did just out of curiosity to see what it was all about, and it's been a six month long journey of discovery since. You are doing amazing things and opening up so many minds to the truth. Your suggestions on hinting flat onto others has been very helpful with showing others. I appreciate the good work you are doing and look forward to avidly following your future endeavors. I've lived both on the East Coast and in the farmlands of Ohio, and there's never even a slight hint of visible curvature. Also, I would appreciate a copy of your survival PDF if you wouldn't mind. Nothing wrong with some preparedness. Uh, okay. And that was from Travis. And uh, the PDF he's talking about is I did a, a website some years ago, and now it's just a PDF. Uh, it, was, it was initially called urbansurvivalusa.com, and it was inspired after the Northridge earthquake in California and the Katrina thing where nobody was preparing for anything. So I wrote a manual uh, called Empty Shelves. It was basically for Americans, and it was, to, it was a survival manual uh, on the condition that you were in a scenario where the, the power went out and stayed out. It wasn't specific against like zombies or aliens or disease or, or you know, martial law or nuclear war. It was strictly for a long-term power outage and I, you know, about 100 pages long. If anybody wants it, I'm more than happy to send it to you for free. It's just a little two meg file with some pictures and some text. And I thought it was pretty good. You can always just email me at msargent23 at comcast.net and just put in the subject line, I want PDF or I want survival guide or something. You don't even have to put anything in the body if you don't want to. That's fine. Uh, this one is from somebody who calls himself Expert Telcom. The subject is GPS satellites versus cell tower. I live in West Texas in the town of Odessa. This is a flat desert oil field country with wide open spaces. I have a friend that I was talking to about the possibility that there are no satellites in the sky. I sent him the link to watch your Flat Earth Clues, the best Flat Earth video I have seen, and I've seen all of the good ones, in parentheses. He has not watched it yet, but he has a good question that I hope you can answer. He said that while traveling in the middle of nowhere, he will lose cell tower reception for making calls, but will continue to have GPS. Do you know of any reason for this if GPS is actually land-based using cell towers? I told him I would look into this because I will not try to answer something if I don't know the answer. Seems like a good question. Please reply either way. Send a link for a video if there is one. Thanks, Expert Telecom. And yeah, no, I don't think... It, what the how you asked that was pretty much the answer i don't think that gps system is running off cell towers i think gps system is running off the old military system which is because remember gps was designed by the dod the united states military i think it's running off the old loran l-o-r-a-n look that up system and it was just put it slapped a different sticker on it. now maybe reinforced with cell towers or maybe reinforced with modified AWACS or spy planes or balloons take your pick but uh, no, I, I don't think the GPS is totally based on cell towers. I don't. Um, if that was the case, then people out in boats wouldn't be able to do anything. And so I think the GPS system is boosted from a military system. So cell towers, I don't think factor into it, or at least not that much. I mean, maybe compensated in some ways. Uh, but when you leave the cell tower area, I think GPS gets, yeah, it has to. You have to at least simulate a global positioning system. You do. Uh, Daniel writes, is the attached photo possible on a globe? For many years, even while at school being taught about our globe planet, I was constantly saying that it just doesn't make any sense and was always looked at as being weird because I was constantly asking, how can they possibly know that for sure? Especially when they talk about something that's billions and billions of light years away or billions and billions of years old. I couldn't escape my curiosity, something so fundamental that I was being told it's a fact, yet I couldn't fathom its legitimacy. It plagued me because no one could give me an answer that would satisfy my curiosity. 
so much so that it led me to question everything, ultimately resulting in many of my relationships with friends, partners, and even family members breaking down to the stage of non-existence. I was told that I got too deep when having a conversation with someone. Even today, I find myself to be somewhat of a loner, only ever being spoken to when someone wants to actually have a deep and meaningful conversation. It's because of this that I found myself every day having nothing to do but be alone and relying on the internet as the only escape from my overwhelming thought process. That is, when I came across the Flat Earth Society. Instantly, everything made more sense, allowing me to finally feel somewhat normal. I think the length of this email is testament to how alone I am, and I must apologize for unloading this mindset on you. Please do not feel the need to address my emotional or cognitive state, it's just me venting. The sole purpose of me contacting you is stated in the subject line of this email. Attached is a panoramic photo showing both the sun and the moon in the same frame, leading me to ask, firstly, if we lived on a globe, shouldn't this image be near impossible? And secondly, has the premise of this image been addressed by either side of the Flat Earth debate? I thank you again for your time and again apologize for my above outpour. Unfortunately, when one's norm is to solely have conversations uh, with their own thoughts, they tend to come across as being loquacious when communicating with somebody else. Cheers, DJ. And unfortunately, I don't remember the photo he was talking um, about the, where the uh, the image, where the sun and the moon in the same frame. Uh, but really, when it comes to the uh, the sky, everything is on the table. Everything is possible. Don't think of it no different. I, I don't know how I can keep drilling this into people uh, in different ways, which is in a planetarium, what is impossible? If you want to show a, a comet going across the sky in a planetarium, you just tell us comet to go across the sky. It's just programming. Uh, you know, a blood moon, the, the phases of the moon, how bright the sun is. That's all just the sky program. That's easy. That's, that's the easy stuff. The tough stuff's down on the ground because we're down here. You know, we're looking at this thing on a microscopic level. So that's that's the that's the harder work. You know, don't don't sell the ground stuff short. Everyone's like, oh, how is this all possible in the sky? It's like, how is this possible in the ground? But yeah, we'll get to that sooner or later. Um, Penny writes concerning, and I'm so sorry, it took me so long to get back to you on this one, Penny. Concerning Cernan's moon mission story. Greetings, Mark Sargent. At the moment, I am attempting to watch a film on Netflix. The film is titled The Last Man on the Moon, in which astronaut Eugene Cernan discusses his two missions to the moon. I say attempting because in my new state of enlightenment, I find I am constantly scrutinizing everything I see and looking for holes in everything I'm told. I find myself stopping, pulling on my ears to make sure they're hearing right, rubbing my eyes to make sure I'm seeing right, or not even bothering with that and just shaking my head at the nonsense that seems so obvious I can't believe everyone doesn't see it. I chose to watch this film today looking for evidence that the Earth is a sphere so that I can put this notion aside and like so many other adventures I've been on in my lifetime. Because I'm still fighting the idea that we've been so completely deceived, I'm secretly hoping to be able to tell my grandkids, if I were to have any, all about the time when I bought into the Flat Earth Conspiracy Storm and, was, and it was a big mistake that was, how dumb and naive I was at the time. Much like my parents told me about the bell-bottom hip-hugger jeans and beehive hairdos, right? Anyway, a little more than halfway through the film, at which point there is already an arsenal of ammunition to argue against the sphere model, Eugene is describing his first mission to the moon. He talks about the moon being between his craft and the sun. As his craft approaches the moon, there is a time of total and complete darkness. He goes on in detail about the experience, but I can barely hear him because he suddenly sounds like Charlie Brown's mom. I am trying to figure out why from his story uh, earlier in the same film when he describes orbiting around the Earth once every 90 minutes, completely out of control, tethered to the spacecraft by an umbilical cord. He doesn't mention complete darkness at all. Wouldn't at some point the Earth have been between himself and the sun on that mission too, unless he wasn't truly orbiting the Earth, maybe just circling above it? I suppose it could depend on the degree of orbit. If he were to orbit from east to west, he would be emerged in total darkness at some point. But if north to south, then not? Isn't one side of the Earth in complete darkness? 
especially in those days when we can see both the sun and the moon at the same time. Isn't it completely dark on the other side from where we are? Would you have any words of wisdom or point me towards any illustrations that might help me understand this concept? I understand if you were too busy to answer this question and it might have been answered already or it just might be stupid enough not to warrant an answer. Regardless, I want to thank you for all your work. Thank you for giving people like me a place to dare to ask questions without having to worry about being treated like a dumbass. I find the way you engage the people who are asking questions and trying to think for themselves without making them feel like morons refreshing. You rock. Best wishes, Penny. Thank you, Penny. And, um... It's not a dumb question. In fact, it's, it's one of your, the more intelligent questions I've heard in a while, which is, yeah, if you're on the other side of the earth and you're an astronaut, wouldn't there be complete darkness? And wouldn't that complete darkness then allow you to see stars around you? Because then the, the sunlight shouldn't be a problem. I mean, like any, anybody, like someone down on the ground in complete darkness, so you're looking up, you should be able to see stars, right? If you're an astronaut only you know, a few hundred miles up or any distance up, as long as the, the earth's out there, in front of you, shouldn't you... Be able to see stars? Possibly. I don't know. Only the astronauts know for sure, and NASA's been keeping the secret for a long time. So, uh, yeah, yeah I, I think it's very possible that you're onto something. Uh, will we know for sure until we can get our own spaceships? Probably not. But, but thank you. Thank you for asking that. Uh, let's see. This subject's called Flat Earth Series. I love your series. You looked at it from every angle and seem to have left no stones unturned. I just want to share my opinion on the matter. I believe the enemies of God and their minions do their due diligence to perpetra perpetrate the effort of undermining undermining him, that must mean God, in every way possible. The Big Bang Theory and evolution are just two obvious routes they chose. In order to follow the former, the globe Earth fits in. Believing in evolution abandons the concept of an intelligent designer creating each and every one of us to live in his wondrous world for a specific reason. After all, he did know every hair on our heads before we were even born. Keep up the good work. Mrs. White from Atlantic Beach, Florida. Uh, yeah. Absolutely right. Uh, which is why I made a clue titled They're Hiding God. I know it took me a while. And I do follow quite a few spiritual uh, avenues when I looked at this. Which is, the, the big one is, if this place was built and it was created if there was created there was a creator and that means intelligent design at the very least does it mean the handprint of god closer to god than we are does that mean an advanced civilization does that mean that it's just another layer before we get to god you know we could we be part of a you know some alien experiment i suppose but i think it's more divine than that this place is very very well designed and it looks like the disclosure is uh is imminent so, uh, yeah, the hiding God was one of the big thing. That's what science has been doing. Science is, has been hiding it, denying it. Science will never look at God because God is mysterious. God is unanswerable. God can't be quantified. And science hates that. If God can't be put into a box and labeled with numbers and measured in some sort of manner, science doesn't want to look at it, which is why I joke about Raiders of the Lost Ark and the Ark of the Covenant, which is... At the end of that movie, if you remember Raiders of the Lost Ark, you get to the Ark of the Covenant, the Americans got it at the very end, and what do they do? The very last scene in the movie, I think it was the most important scene in the whole movie. They put it in a crate, they put it in a warehouse, and no one's ever, ever going to see it. Because the Ark of the Covenant goes against science. It is magical. It is mystical. Science doesn't believe in the word magic, even though the double slit experiment is the closest thing to magic I've ever seen. Look that up, the double slit experiment. The experiment that basically says uh, when a tree falls in the forest and there's no one there to hear it, does it make a sound? And the answer is no, because it hasn't been drawn yet. There is no tree in the forest if you're not there to see it. May nothing might be there unless there's someone there to actually see it. That's what the double slit experiment says. And 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 science doesn't think that's magic at all. They think it's oh, it's totally natural. It's just quantum physics. Like, dude, that's some of the creepiest stuff. That can't. Uh, I don't want to get into it. That's a whole other discussion for another time. Deborah writes, flat Earth newbie. Hello, just want to have someone to discuss this matter since everyone around me thinks I'm crazy. 
from Deborah, and I, she's just going down the path. Usually, I don't respond to those directly uh, unless you know, unless I do this, unless I read it, uh, because I get a lot of those emails. People are just like, "Oh, I have no one to talk to." It's like, yeah, you you do. You just haven't looked into this deep enough. There is a lot of people on flat Earth right now. A lot. You think of how many people have been inspired to make videos, and then think how many people are out there that even greater numbers, way greater numbers that are too scared because they like you, they don't know who to talk to about it. Uh, and so, you know, they're just quietly absorbing it in the background. And when this thing breaks open, I bet there's going to be so many people. They're going to be uh, saying things like, oh, yeah, totally new. They'll, they'll see it on the news. And like, oh, yeah, I knew. And someone like, you knew? It's like, oh, yeah. Why didn't you tell anybody? Who am I going to tell? So thank you very much, Deborah. Uh, let's see here. Cajun Nice Davis writes, the earth is flat, all caps with tons of question marks and exclamation points. I want to know more and even more exclamation points. Please, I need your help. I would like to know where I can get information about the truth other than YouTube videos, example, reading material. And so I sent him a link to uh, my Amazon book. And I mean, most of the stuff you, you really, the good stuff's on YouTube, no question. But there are books out there. Eric DeBay's got a book. I got a book. There's other people that have, that have written books. I don't know if books are really going to give you that much extra information because YouTube videos can be made so quickly and they've got some, so many good things in them that uh, I, I highly encourage people. I mean, you go to my website, enclosedworld.com if you want, or the subscription site, marksargent.com. Uh, you can go to Rob Skiba's site, testingtheglobe.com. There's also, you know, live shows on it on True Frequency Radio, like Jaron's show, like my show, like Rob Skiba's show. Good stuff out there. So there's plenty of things to look at. Although most of it is eventually going to be end up on YouTube because YouTube is really replacing television. It has been for a number of years. Cindy writes, they are hiding God when she's obviously referring to the separate videos. And I've already asked these guys to put flatter somewhere in the title there. I, when I made the clues, I made them as Creative Commons license, which means that uh, anyone can use them. You can, you can, if you go to my channel, Mark A. Sargent, and look at Flat Earth Clues or anything else I've done, as long as it's set as Creative Commons license, you can use it. You can tear it apart using, using your own thing. So I made the clues as, as 11 different separate videos, an intro and then 11 clues. And uh, several people, because they weren't all in one video, several people took, took them stitched them all together and then made their own videos. One was called uh, They Are Hiding God with the Great Sly Ever, which was a kind of modification of They Are Hiding God, which was the title of Clue 10. And that's climbing up towards 2 million hits. And the other one, then Flat Earth's not even in the title. And the other one is called uh, Under the Dome Full Documentary, which is interesting. I don't know if we were we're tying that to the television show or the Stephen King book. Uh, but it was also the Flat Earth Clues, and uh, Flat Earth wasn't in the title. And I think that's got a million and a half hits, which is really, really great. So anyway, sorry, Cindy writes, hi, interesting video. And that's what she's talking about. I have questioned it before when I flew, but never investigated it. Cheers, Cindy. And I like her um, her, her email is, uh, I won't say where it's from, but it's climbing higher. That's really cool. Doug writes, quick question from the flat, from a flat earth novice, sir, always with this sir stuff. Am I getting old? If this gets to you and you respond, that's very good, but I am 64. Well read, meaning I studied the Bible hand in hand with Bible commentary since 1977 when I became a Christian. It's embarrassing to admit, but I only heard about flat earth less than two weeks ago. It struck a nerve. Here's my question. It's important. Just prior to last Christmas, 2015, both the Queen of England and the Pope said that there was this was to be our last Christmas. The Queen was actually rather blunt about it. No more Christmas after 2015. Have you heard about this? No more Christmas after this last one. Very fatalistic and sort of scary if I were being totally honest. Have you any idea what she's referring to? Please, any ideas? Thanks. Doug Brown, Portland, Oregon. Uh, yeah, I have heard about it, and it is a little alarming just because it's, as, as I'm doing this, it's September 12th, and there's only three months left in, in the, to, to the end of the year, 
And will we see the next Christmas? I, I would hope so, but you know, you never know. It's, you know, I would have said that we wouldn't be talking about Flat Earth, that Flat Earth wouldn't even be a topic. But uh, it is a topic. And we are, um, you know, the American elections are coming up. And I don't even know if those are going to happen. And that's going to that's gonna happen in the next six, seven weeks. So is this our last Christmas? I, I don't know. I don't know. I will say this, though. If you believe in cycles, everything seems to happen, every, you know, every, what as they say, every seven, eight years. And uh, it's good timing for it. So I don't know. Uh, I'm hoping that we will come to some sort of resolution one way or the other. Uh, if, if the Queen says it's our last Christmas, uh, and I do remember that that quote, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I'm not going to speculate too much and say, oh, it's doom and gloom, run for your lives. Uh, I'm not going to do that. I try to treat the world as, as half full. Do I think there's a transition coming? Yes. Do I think there's a good chance that something might happen before the end of the year? Yes, I do. Do I know what it is? No, I don't. I don't. Uh, I would like to see, you know, I'd like to think it was something really cool, like a golden spaceship showing up and CNN covering it and, and uh, you know, going, you know, social media carrying the story all over the place and everybody figuring out at the same time that we're not alone and that we're all in the same boat and we should stop hurting each other. That's why I'd, I'd hope to happen. But if it doesn't, I'm not going to lose too much sleep about it because, uh, look, I followed the Planet X thing for a while. Now, was I as, as convinced as I am about Planet X? No. No, I think Flat Earth is, I mean, Flat Earth's got a huge following compared to, to Planet X. And uh, plus we have no time frame. That's the great thing about Flat Earth is that it, it's not based on a time thing. It's not based on a prophecy or a prediction. Now, will the Queen of England, will that have anything to really do with the Flat Earth? No, probably not. Uh, but I'd like to think that the Flat Earth has something that's tied to, you know, whatever the transition period is. I, I really do. So let's just leave it at that for now. Uh, let's see. This one is from Zoran. Hello, Mark Sargent. My name is Zoran Lavrik. Great name, Zoran. I am from Chicago. I came across a flatter theory a year ago. It piqued my interest. This is not his native language. I'm, I'm going through his spelling mistakes. Uh, now I am captivated to find the answer. I saw most of the videos on the on YouTube about evidence how Earth is a plane and not a planet. Most of the time, when there is a video from the balloon flying, ab from flying above the clouds, the sun is always on the horizon and people would say how it is the sun setting. It got me thinking about a possible experiment with either four airplanes or balloons with cameras attached to them. They should, the airplanes, face, sun, face the sun coming from the different sides of the world at the same time. If they all see the sun and it looks like it is setting on the horizon, it would prove that the sun is inside the dome and not 93 million miles away. I believe you already thought of that. I just wanted to run this idea by you. And maybe you know some pilots that will do that experiment and prove once and for all that the sun is inside the firmament. I am attaching the image that I created in the 3D software to show you what I mean by the experiment presented in this email. Thank you for opening my mind. Keep up the good work. Sincerely, Zoran Lovrik. Thank you, Zoran. And that's an interesting experiment. I don't know if it would actually prove anything, but it's an interesting experiment. Uh, flat Earth, what is the weight? And he spelled it W-E-I-G-H-T. Hi, Mark. I really enjoyed your show, and I totally believe in the Flat Earth model. Recently, I was asked, what is weight? I know the conventional explanation with gravity, but I don't believe in gravity anymore. <laughs> Have you ever discussed this with anyone else? You always talk with well-educated people in your show. Maybe next time you can get a chance to ask a physicist that understands flat earth how can weight be defined if there is no gravity let me know your thoughts george um yeah george uh, i i am one of those I, i'm still trying to figure out how exactly people will say because this gets twisted and i i don't i disagree with the flat earth community jumping on the bandwagon saying there is no gravity because gravity is just a name for a force so, you know, Rose by any other name smells just as sweet. And that's that's what applies here. It's, look, something is either pushing us to the ground or pulling us to the ground. I think it's pulling. I, I don't think it's necessarily buoyancy. 
not that it really matters because it's still a name for a force so the weight is re a real thing and, and gravity is a real thing I mean it's a force we're obviously being held to the ground by something is it electromagnetic maybe uh, is it is it uh, chemical based and you know chemical electromagnetic maybe I don't know is it just a programming thing I you know that we define like a physics engine in software also maybe I, I don't I don't really know um, other than I know it's a real thing or is real you know I don't want to split hairs and go down what is reality but what we do in simulations is we tell gravity to whatever we see we take an object we say <coughs> how fast does it take an object to fall from a certain height and you know then we can define its weight so if object has weight 100 you can make the weight whatever you want um, it's it's all variable so I don't really it's gonna to get too confusing if I dig in this too much it's supposed to be a simple email Q&A which is gravity in a simulation is wherever you want it to be what it is here we don't know because we don't know the exact mechanics from it science will say oh yeah it has to do with density in the core of uh, you know the mass of the material that we're on the, the earth and and you know if, if you're on Jupiter there's more mass and there's more gravity but we don't know because we haven't been on Jupiter and I don't even know if they've done a gravity test um, from the Mars rover but that implies that the Mars rover is actually on Mars and I do not even think that I'll quote the Daniel Tosh line where he says don't put a Roomba in the middle of the desert and tell me it's Mars it's good it's a good line I don't think he believes in in the space program so let's move on uh, Brent writes reporter with inquiry mark i'm an american freelance writer based in cambodia i'm working on a story about the work of eric dubay and the flat earth world and was reaching out to you for some clarification i know that you guys have had some debates over your conflicting theories i was hoping you could tell me in plain english what are the major differences between your theory and his past brent crane and yeah i've actually gotten this question a few times and uh <coughs> best off if you if you just ask him because uh, I don't think he even knows at this point I know I can only tell you what what happened in the very beginning of this when uh, my first video I think was like two months after his and he was he was seemed to be pretty much on board with me and then I did one of my interviews I think it was like my third one with Lisa Harrison and she and and I, I talked about how I didn't think the earth was perfectly flat I thought it might be kind of roulette table shaped although I'm not supposed to say roulette table anymore I'm supposed to say like hubcap because all the numbers on a roulette table add up to 666 but I was following the Orlando Ferguson map and I kind of like that and he didn't want me to follow that at all he he said you can't you you can't say he in fact he didn't even contact me directly he had one of his minions contact me I said you can't you can't talk about that directly and he also mentioned that I shouldn't talk about or use crow triple seven as a reference with the lunar waves and it was it was kind of like it was like you're not supposed to talk about this like wait what do you what do you mean like who are you it's like your your videos yeah fine I didn't even know he wrote a book at that point Matt had to tell me Matt Boylan and I didn't even uh, he, he considered himself like the ultimate authority I was like you're not allowed to talk you know he was like throwing down the gauntlet saying you know I decree that you're not supposed to talk about this like what are you talking about there's no rules here we're just trying to understand this and those were the two only two differences that I knew of was that uh, I didn't think the world was perfectly flat I thought there might be a few bends and twists in it and that um, I didn't know if the moon was two-dimensional or three-dimensional and but I liked crow triple seven in fact there was a guy that said if if Eric came up with better moon footage than crow triple seven would you use it I said I said that on air on a round table I said of course I would I would absolutely use his stuff if uh, if he had better stuff nobody's ever sent me anything better than crow triple seven when it comes to moon footage so I still to this day will use it and I'm glad I did because now he's really leaning down the path of that there may be like you know that space not may not be space it could be water there actually could be a firmament and that NASA is a bunch of crap and uh, I'm, I'm really glad that the yeah, crow isn't an official flat earther but I'm glad he's leaning more towards our views than than other people so other than that I don't know the bigger question would be, would be when it comes between Eric and I is why exactly we're enemies 
Why does he have an enemies list called the Flat Earth Wall of Shame? And why am I number one with a bullet on it? It doesn't make any sense. I've never said a bad thing about the guy. So why? In fact, he's lashed out at basically everyone in the community. There's no allies on it for Eric in the Flat Earth community. Find me one. Find me somebody that backs Eric other than maybe ODD now. He's fairly recent, though, compared to everybody else. And who knows how long he's, you know, before Eric turns on him. I don't, I don't know. So thank you, Brent, for the question. I did answer him, actually, in an email. Um, and let's see here. Next one is from Ellie. Ellie says, hello, Mark. Here is something I don't think anyone has yet mentioned with reference to the Earth that you might include in your message. The implications of deception and charlatanism in the areas of mysticism, prophecy, and particularly in recent years, life after death and psychic phenomena. Specifically, if the individuals who claim to have some form of access to transcendental knowledge of reality were legitimate, then why do they never reveal the deception or falsehood of a spinning earth, planets, and the vacuum of space? Please let me know that you have received my email and what you think of that. Thanks, Ellie. And a good question, Ellie. And think of it this way. If a system this complex and this um, perfect was designed. Do you really think a simple astral projector would be able to get out and, and figure, figure it out? We, we, we would have known this hundreds of years ago. People have been astral projecting for a long, long time. So no, uh, that's, that's one of the layers. You know, if you, if, if you believe in the seven dimensions or the seven layers of heavens, uh, you know, th the illusion is not going to be completely broken. Now, that being said, if you're astral projecting and you want to see it, I think you uh, do have the ability to see it. I do think you'll be able to figure out the dimensions and the shape and the true shape and the true nature of this world. But I don't think you're going to have you're it's not going to be happenstance. You've got to you've got to be looking for it. Uh, otherwise, I think the illusion um, transcends everything. And the illusion also applies to people that do out of body experiences, even people that, you know, have died, you know, for, for drowning for six minutes and, and leave the world and come back. I think it also applies to them because there'd be too many people coming back from near death experiences going you're never going to believe what I saw. The earth looks freaking flat. Yeah, this, the people that, I should say, the beings that built this place uh, would have taken that into consideration almost immediately. Uh, let's see how many more I can get to. I've got another 12 minutes, roughly, I think. Uh, let's see, Chris, subject, subject is Chris Everard is great, but you are greater. Ooh, I like him already. I don't really read these things. I just kind of scan them real fast and I throw them into my short-term memory and... I don't actually take a good look until uh, until I finally read them through. Uh, Chris Everard is one of my favorite researchers, hence I was really hoping he would one day interview one of the big names in the Flat Earth community. I was therefore thrilled when I saw he had interviewed you. He is generally a wealth of information and hence good at asking questions. You did an awesome job at being patient, answering his questions, and engaging him in discussion. I would love to hear him and David Weiss in discussion. Uh, yeah. Uh, Chris Everhard show also on Truth Frequency Radio uh, he took it sweet time and took over 18 months before he fondly decided to do a show on it and he said to bring me in and he is not a believer in any way shape or form because he's an amateur, amateur astronomer and if you're an astronomer or an astrophysicist or you're, you're done there's nothing you can do you are no way in any way shape or form going to believe in the flat earth you're just not going to do it so when Chris decided to interview, and he didn't tell me he was against this. He just told me he wanted to interview me, and he was really excited about having me on the show. And I did the show, and I could tell in the first 10 minutes that he was totally against it. But I stayed with him the entire duration uh, of the show, and we um, we made it through and, and didn't end up yelling. He, of course, laughed and thought it was hilarious and everything. But his one of his big arguments was, I can see the moons of, of Jupiter through my telescope are you therefore it has to be a sphere because jupiter is a sphere and therefore we are a sphere and i my argument is you take a pair of binoculars into a planetarium and you look at at jupiter does it look more or less spherical doesn't matter because you're inside a planetarium and then he would come back and say well oh yeah we know we're in a planetarium at that point i go when you walk out of a planetarium how do you know you're just not walking into a bigger one that's all i'm saying is that we are in a giant enclosed structure and that everything up in the sky is a really high-end display system 
he couldn't get his head around it he's going it's too big it basically for a lot of those people it's too big you're talking about something that's so huge that uh it's mind-blowing and he didn't know what to do with it so anyway uh let's see here we got a few more we can do michael writes hello mark my name is mike i have watched several of your videos and i've been mesmerized by the flat earth topic i have not seen much about airlines which to me is a piece of the key evidence by debunking the earth rotating at a thousand miles an hour my niece recently flew to from new york to florida she boarded the plane and i was waiting for her plane to take off i was delayed so i sat and it dawned on me how in the world does a plane traveling at an average speed of 700 miles an hour catch up to the earth traveling at a thousand that defies logic the flight is approximately two hours that would put the plane in the middle of the atlantic after two hours i chuckled to myself and said it can't be spinning thanks for your work keep spreading the truth can you make a video covering the math on the earth rotation and flight speed thanks god bless mike h and yeah, Mike, that's an old question. We don't know, you know, I don't know if you're going to find any real formulas. I mean, there might be some people talking about it, but it's pretty easy. Um, it's a thousand miles of the equator and it's less as you move towards the north or south pole to where when you get to like the north pole, you're spinning at no miles an hour. No different than staying at the center of a merry-go-round, which is uh, when you're staying at the center of a merry-go-round, you don't feel any G-forces at all. You don't really feel any spin. But yeah, if you're close to the equator, you should be a thousand miles an hour going one way or the other and i say that you can't have it both ways meaning people say oh well that you know the plane is being held down by gravity you know when you're going with the earth and going yeah but it's being held down both ways because if that's the case you know how how are you how are you getting away with that and isn't the uh, isn't the plane considered like a ballistic object because there's several people that says well a bullet leaves the earth atmosphere you know or the gra pull the gravity so it has to um you have to count for the courage of the earth even though i've got a sniper instructor who wrote me and said no it's not even in the manual uh, and artillery people and missile people and they're saying it never they ever have to account for the curvature of the earth i'm sorry the the coriolis effect which is the spin of the earth so why is it that you know every once in a while you get a, a, a sniper on national television and say oh yeah i shot a thousand yards or 1500 yards and had to had to account for the spin so, no you didn't you know, didn't have to do that at all plane same sort of thing a plane is traveling i mean yeah it's not traveling as fast as a bullet but some planes are like for example uh the sr-71 travels faster than a 30 six, 6 rifle bullet or a 308 or a 762 or wherever you want to call it which is um uh it's a common round it's not even a super super fast round so what speed do you have to be in a plane before you leave you know where you have to start dealing with the the spin of the earth no one's ever talked about it. no one's ever going to talk about it. nobody knows it's one of those things we've assumed for years and years and years and nobody talks about it it's fascinating so anyway moving on uh this one's from diego goes hi mark i came across your videos while trying to find good quality and documented videos about what satan's been trying to hide from humanity since the beginning that god is real and sent his only son jesus in rescue for all who decide to believe in him the bible is full of evidence that the earth is flat maybe not so clear like the evidence of the creation to debunk darwin's theory of evolution but still it's right there best regards diego gonzalez from model columbia and yeah, Diego, if you're listening to this, um, please check out Rob Skiba's website. You probably already have by, at this point, which is testingtheglobe.com. It'll give you all the Christian references you want. Oh, let's see. Who's this one from? This one's from Nasambo. Sir, I'm very happy and honored to have seen your documentary, Under the Dome. It is interesting and almost absurd, being that you clearly go against... Nope, I already read this one. Yep, yep, yep. That was a repeat. I don't know. He must have sent it twice. And I must have pasted it twice. Uh, let's see. Hi, Mark. I am not sure if anyone has looked into this, but a few weeks ago, I was out walking my dogs about an hour before sunset. It was a clear evening with a few banks of clouds in the far distance. I live under the main flight path for air traffic crossing the Atlantic, coming into the UK and beyond into Northern Europe. I could see the contrail of the plane way, way, way out and kept an eye on it while I walked my usual route. It took quite a while to fly over me, about 20 minutes or so. I wondered how far away it was when I first saw it, so knowing the time I saw the plane, I managed to identify it on flight radar 
It was going to Germany and was at 32,000 feet, traveling at over 550 miles an hour. It must have been close to 200 miles out, which converts to 26,500 feet of curvature. When I first saw the plane, although it was way out there, was still more sky to, to the horizon quite a bit. I think it wouldn't be possible to see the plane when we shouldn't be able to, to and prove it using the data from flight radar, 225 miles out equates to 33,750 feet of curvature. And I know judging where I saw the plane that I could see further than that. Regards, Neil Wright, yeah, absolutely right. More people should do that test. Uh, curvature, easy test to do. Uh, easy to calculate, 8 inches per mile squared, you can find maps all over the place. Uh, this one's from Travis. Hey, I saw your YouTube video on the Flat Earth. What's outside the dome and why did they bomb the sky? Lots of question marks. Why won't they just say the truth, whether it's flat or round? I'm a conspiracy guy too and would like to know more. I'm a combat veteran of the military and my name's Travis. Thanks. Uh, why did they bomb the sky? Well, because that's what men do. Uh, if they find a barrier that they want to get past, it's like, we should be able to break out. Why do people try to break out of prison? So, not to say this isn't necessarily a prison, but it does have some qualities of that. So, you know, maybe it's to keep us in. Maybe it's to keep up bad things out. I don't know. As far as, you know, not laying the truth out, it's because the structure and everything that we know and love would change. That's all anyone would talk about. It's all anyone would care about. And of course, the big thing is that it would prove some sort of divine intelligence, or at the very least, some sort of advanced intelligence who built this place. And they are not going to let that happen. You can't be the ultimate power unless you're the ultimate power. Think about that. Cody writes, Mark Sargent, my name is Cody. And I'm from Oklahoma. I just want to say your clues and videos on YouTube are awesome. It puts into perspective how special we are on this flat earth. Yahweh created for us. Thank you and again for all that you do. Between you and Rob Skiba, my eyes have really been opened. Well, you're welcome, Cody. Kevin writes, first time reaching out. Enjoy your channel and all the hard work you put into your shows. Can't even imagine the courage it must take to go around the grain knowing most people will never wake up and bash on everything you say. Curious to know when your awakening began. And what subjects started all the dot connecting? Thanks so much, Kevin Swango. Uh, yeah, Kevin. Uh, if you want to know more, please go to my YouTube channel, which is MK, I'm sorry, it's Mark Sargent, that's M A R K, K Sargent, S A R G E N T, uh, on YouTube. Or just actually, you know, it's easier. Just type in Flat Earth Clues on YouTube or type it in on any search engine and you will find it. Uh, and, and from there, you'll, you'll, you know, just go to the interviews. You'll, I told it, told the story a million times and all the other interviews, but I'll tell you this and we'll end the, the video on this, which is, uh, I first got into it in the summer of 2014, thought it was a joke, thought it was, couldn't be a real topic. Like anybody tried to debunk it and spent nine months just hammering on it. Couldn't do it. And then in February of last year, uh, you know, February 10th, 3.30 in the morning, woke up and had it. I had it. I flipped sides at that point. I said, you know what? I think that it's actually not a globe anymore. And I put, you know, the, the series of clues together. And then I put the question out on the internet. And it's like, how do you know you are where you think you are? Because I don't think we're in a sphere. Prove me wrong. And here we are 19 months later, maybe even more. And nobody's gone and proven it. Nobody's, nobody's proved a sphere. So where are you guys? The scientists are running, running scared. Neil deGrasse Tyson will not talk to me, will not be interviewed with me, will not debate, uh, nor will any other scientist. I'll take them all on, bring them all on one big panel, big panel versus me. We'll see how it goes. Anyway, guys, uh, we'll wrap this one up and uh, that's the end of Q&A one and I will try to make more soon. So thanks very much. Baby, what is this? What is this? Is that a model of the flat geocentric earth? <laughs> nice. <laughs>